of this video is going to gain me so many followers, I'm sure. Because, you know, I'm super popular as it is, and once I start talking about the real geeky and nerdy shit, definitely going to explode on YouTube. God, I'm feeling so sarcastic today. Stem cells, you're so 2000 and late. It's not where it's at anymore. The biggest rage in the field is CRISPR. When are you gonna throw in some CRISPR in your face creams? You know what? Heck, throw a few CRISPRs in there. Let's see what happens. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video was prompted by something I saw very recently on uh, somebody else's channel. Doesn't have anything to do with their channel. They were just talking about the product and the product had the term stem cells in the name. So as usual, when I saw a scientific term being thrown around randomly into skincare products, my eyes rolled so hard that they almost fell out of my eye sockets. So I figured, you know, I'm going to make this video and hopefully you will find it mildly entertaining, a little bit educational, you'll get a good laugh out of it, don't take it too seriously, but you know, maybe get something out of it such as... Not every scientific term they throw in your skincare is actually making any sense. Because when it comes to stem cells in your skincare, that shit makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, let's get started. Let's get into the nitty gritty, let's talk about it, let's, you know, think about this logically together. So when it comes to stem cells in your face cream, I got a few concerns. First of all, what kind of stem cells are we talking? Are we talking embryonic stem cells or adult stem cells? Are we talking totipotent stem cells or are we talking pluripotent and multipotent stem cells? And before you accuse me of being a jackass who throws scientific terms left and right without explaining what they mean and um, just trying to sound condescending, I, that's not the point at all. I do not want to sound condescending. All of these terms are very easy to explain, so I'm just going to explain them in layman terms. So let's talk about totipotent stem cells because those have the most potential especially in your face cream. Although they'd be the most difficult to obtain, most morally questionable. Okay, let's talk about those. So, you know, let's, let's refer to the human situation. When fertilization occurs, you have, you know, the egg and the sperm, and they meet, and they fuse, and they form a cell which is called the zygote. That cell starts to divide, and in those first few divisions, and in those first few divisions, you get this like clump of cells which is totipotent. That basically means these few clumps of cells can program and execute a whole organism. So they can, you know, result in a whole baby, a whole human being. That's basically what that means. So I'm thinking probably they're not going to throw the totipotent cells in your stem cell cream because unless they got like a supply of pregnant women who are willing to donate their unborn children, I don't really see how that's gonna happen, ethically speaking. So probably they don't mean those cells. Plus, why would you need a human to grow on your face? Okay, let's scratch those. Those are not what they mean. Maybe they mean adult multipotent stem cells. That means, basically, that in various parts of your tissues you have this small pool of cells which is multipotent. Stem cells are basically cells that can differentiate into a variety of other types of adult cells. For instance, in your bone marrow, you got this pool of cells, which is called hematopoietic stem cells, that's just a fancy word for blood stem cells, and those few blood stem cells can give rise to all the different types of blood cells in your bloodstream. They cannot become, you know, brain cells, they cannot become kidney cells unless you, you know, artificially treat them somehow but they can become any of those blood cells. They got limitations, but they got a lot of potential too. So I'm thinking, if they're going to throw stem cells in your face cream, probably they mean, you know, stem cells that are somehow derived from skin. So, you know, a pool of stem cells from the skin. Don't know how they're going to get those, but let's say they got them. So, concern number one. Let's say, that by some very far-fetched science fiction, because at this point it's far-fetched science fiction, let's say that they obtain the stem cells. Then they throw them in the face cream. This is where my second concern comes from. 
How are these cells going to survive in your face cream? Because let me tell you, when we grow stem cells in the lab, we don't just throw them on something and hope for the best. You have to actually grow these cells in special types of media, like they, get to, they need to get nutrients and stuff. That basically means that you need to throw on some liquid on them, which we call medium, that has nutrients. Not only does it have nutrients, in the case of stem cells, it has a bunch of very expensive additives in order to keep these cells in their stem cell state. Because otherwise, they lose their stemness and they differentiate. Which basically means that they don't remain in that immature state, but they just, you know, become a mature skin cell. So that's where my second concern comes from. So my question is, Without any nutrients in that face cream to feed the stem cells and without those special additives that I was talking about earlier, how are these stem cells, one, going to survive at all and two, going to remain stem cells? So companies, people who make face creams with stem cells, can you please tell me how that works? Because if you found a way to, you know, keep the stem cells in culture, you know, growing, without nutrients and without additives, for the love of sweet baby Jesus, please share the information, we'd really like to know. Let's say that our science fiction scenario gets even more far-fetched and somehow, by some sort of like magical recipe that skincare companies have, those face creams contain stem cells. So you smear the skincare, you know, with the stem cells on your face. What happens then? Do these stem cells somehow magically penetrate through your own skin? Or is the idea that they're going to magically release substances there that, you know, give you the skin of a 20 year old? I don't know. That's also very unclear to me. Exactly what are the stem cells going to do once you put them on your face? Ugh, it is warm! So we got some unanswered questions here. And that's not only the case for, you know, stem cells in your face cream. Same goes for terms such as DNA or coenzyme Q10, which are also thrown in skincare. And, you know, the whole point of this video is to be a little bit sarcastic and just show you how companies tr like to throw, you know, fancy science terms to throw you off your game. But you shouldn't be thrown off your game. So you know, buy the face creams, try them, if they work for you, that's great. But at the same time, please remain critical, ask questions and find out exactly what they mean when they say shit's being put in your face cream, that sounds real fancy. Because sometimes it's just a way for them to get more money out of you because, you know, those stem cells, shit's expensive. Please don't take this video as me trying to sound condescending or in any way, you know, to offend you. That is not the point at all. I just wanted to have a little fun with something that we chuckle a lot at work because for those of you that don't know I work actively as a biomedical scientist and at the lab with my friends there we very often have a good laugh about all these science terms thrown around randomly in with no sense whatsoever so I just wanted to have a little fun and that's pretty much all that video was meant to be I hope you enjoyed it Please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video where I promise we're just going to be talking about makeup and no science. Bye!